news writing, I was, oh, we haven't got the screen up there yet. Yes. Dougie's an Irishman, so it works a different way again. OK. <laughs> there we are. Um, what, is, what is news? This, I, I, I kind of feel quite difficult because you've had so much good content this morning and so many good ideas. Can you actually take anything else in? So I thought I'd probably start with something real, uh, and that is, if I was not here this morning, I would be at the Old Bailey. Um, because today, there is an Adventist couple who are going to be sentenced for manslaughter, the death of their own child, um, because they mistreated that child, because they didn't um, take medical advice, and ultimately because they didn't take spiritual church advice either. Now, I should be up at the Old Bailey, but thankfully one of my bosses, Paul Lockham, is there instead because he's the one that's liaised with the police enough. But if you look at it from a totally secular perspective, that is news. I'm waiting, I've been watching the news feed at the back of the room there just to see when that announcement is going to be made because when it is made, phones are going to start ringing and somehow we have to have a response. When the, the couple pleaded guilty, we were expecting them to go to trial and then they, they decided to plead guilty and that made it easier for them. It also made it easier for us as a church because a lot of things would have come out in the trial which we would have had to um, talk about. So when it came out, I woke up one morning because the police had forgotten to advise us, the liaison officer had gone on holiday and hadn't briefed the other person to contact us. So I woke up, switched my computer on, and the first headline was the Daily Telegraph, manslaughter, uh, which was okay, it wasn't a bad story. Then the Daily Mail got hold of it, and it goes downhill from there. So we, we quickly had to produce a response. That response went online. If you type the name of the child, and I'm not going to pronounce it because it's an impossible Zimbabwean name, or the name of the mother, and if you put the child's name in, we come number four in the Google search. You have the BBC, you have the Daily Telegraph, you then have images of the child or related to the child, and then you have the Adventist website response. So yesterday lunchtime, I get a phone call from the BBC. They said, you know that this couple are going to be sentenced tomorrow. Who can we talk to? That is news. That's why Pastor Lockham is at the Old Bailey today, so that as soon as the sentencing is over, he can walk outside and talk to a BBC reporter. Hopefully a positive communication, which we've worked on and which we've briefed on. That's the bad side of it. News, thankfully, most of the time for Seventh-day Adventists is, is good and is positive. And um, wherever it goes, whether it's the BBC or Evening Standard, Daily Star, hopefully not, um, or whether, <laughs> whether it's in our Adventist periodicals and websites and publications, is also telling a story. Let me just give you my credentials, because some of you see that come out every week. I publish on the website uh, continuously. There are stories going up on the website about what Adventists are doing. And my aim within that, if you can see that, is to inform, to engage, and to inspire. For our church members, yes. But actually, principally, for the people outside our church. And our website primarily is for the people outside our church, because how else do they find out about us? Very interesting, we just changed our auditors, we've just changed our pension plan, which means I'm gonna to have to work an extra 10 years than I thought I was. Um, but the providers that were coming and bidding to be auditors to take over our pension, they went through our website with a tooth comb. They wanted to know everything about us. And the news on the site tells them the story of who we are. The news on your local church website is going to indicate, is there anything going on at my church? Is there anything that's going to attract me to actually walk across the road and come in the door? That's the important reason for having it there. One more very brief story. This is just outside my house, about 200 meters from my front door. This is where I walk the dogs 
every morning, including this morning. The puddle wasn't quite so big this morning. Um, but I was walking my dogs around there last year at the time of the Bracknell Half Marathon, and the warden that you can see there in the fluorescent vest, I saw him there, and this flood was there because it had been pouring down with rain. Happens rarely in Britain, but when it does, it does it. And um, he said to me, what are we going to do? Because they've got to run straight through that flood. And so, you know, just casually chatted, you know, suggest, well, they could go through the car park and up the bank on the other side. And then I thought, here is a photo opportunity. So I went home and I got my camera and I came back wearing my wellies and walked into the middle of that flood, by which time you can see the runners being diverted by the wardens to go around. I took the photos, probably about 30 of them, and then as I was walking back to my house, I saw the official race photographer. And I said to him, I've got some photos of these guys running through the flood. Are you interested? Well, of course, he didn't know who I was from Adam. He didn't really care. He was doing his job. And he just kind of waved me away and said, why don't you send it into the newspaper? So I took him at his word. I sent it in to, the, to our local papers. I sent it into South Today, which is the BBC local TV station. Six o'clock that evening, or quarter past six, when South Today comes on, I started getting phone calls from friends saying, do you know your photos on the television? The reason it was on the television was because South Today was reporting on the bad weather in the south of England and some things that happened in different places, and even the Bracknell Half Marathon had to be diverted. And this photo then appears on the screen with a nice sign there that says, photo courtesy of Victor Hulbert, and I was suddenly famous. The race photographer didn't get his photo anywhere except in the official race publication. News is being in the right place at the right time and then telling the story. I have a friend in this hall who will remain nameless who now complains because he puts things on Facebook from his weekend event and then he complains that I write to him and say, can I have a story about it? Because if you don't tell the story, how can people be inspired by it? How can other people know about it? How can people be attracted to come to your church for something else? And so with pictures, with words, we need to tell those stories. Here's the last picture, and then we'll get on to some more positive examples. I see our news, in fact, I see our social media, in a sense, as simply a window through which people see us. And it's either a very attractive window that looks nice and they say, oh yes, maybe it is worth finding out a little bit more about you, or maybe it looks like that. And that's an American church, by the way, just in case you're asking. Um, so here's some windows. Here's why news is important. This is the Northampton Telegraph. 120th anniversary of the Kettering Seventh-day Adventist Church, one of the oldest churches in the British Isles. And They've sent a photographer along and a journalist. They've taken the photo of those kids. If I'm an atheist, I've still got to read at least the first line of that story because the photo is so engaging. And people in Kettering now know there's a 120-year-old Seventh-day Adventist church that is still alive. Brilliant. Here's the Isle of Man, one of our smallest churches in the British Union, but they've got a story in their local newspaper. Seventh-day Adventists hold weekly community care events. They have a little coffee shop, cafe kind of thing before church on a Saturday morning. And it's in the local paper. And so they say, oh, something's happening in this church. Maybe it's you know, worth, worth coming to that. There's, there's the whole story. We don't have time to read it. Or here we are, Hampstead Church, one of the bigger London churches. We, we are coming up to our annual Adra appeal time in a few weeks. And, uh, you know, we go and knock on the doors and we do our fundraising and we go pubbing the one time in the year Adventists are allowed to go in a pub. But we don't tell anybody about it. And so when we knock on the door, nobody knows who we are. Well, these guys got a story in their local paper. And therefore, there's some recognition. And at the end of the event, they put another story in that said, thank you, this year we achieved our goal, we raised 40,000 pounds, thanks to you. And so a double story, news is important. It makes a difference. Sometimes, if you can't even write the news yourself, because Halifax is a very, very small church in the north of England, and... Not much happens there, apparently. But one of the church members, reading his local paper, saw a story that said clubs and societies are dying in this town, 
And he then wrote in, in the columns, in, in the co reader's comment section of the paper, and said, well, I, I can confirm that every club except one with which I'm involved appears in decline. That one exception is my Seventh-day Adventist church, where the weekly attendance has recently increased by 300%. That happened in Forest Lake, you might have a problem. In Halifax, I think they probably still had a lot of spare seats, because... <laughs> But they'd use the skill to tell the story, and it was engaging. So people will get involved with it. We could show some more. I, I don't have time to show you all these stories. But different things where people are writing or getting articles in the paper, and it helps to tell the story. It helps to make us known. It increases our profile. This is equally true on your website. And here's an example of just one website. This is Lemington Adventist mission in, in the Midlands, and they've just put a banner up there that says, the ladies did it. Well, what did they do? I've no idea, but it's an engaging banner. I'm going to click and see, here's an active church that actually tells a story. These ladies all went running on a fun run to raise some money for a cancer charity. Great. Here's a church that's alive. The number of Adventist church websites I go to and look at, and the last thing that happened was the Christmas before last. So why am I going to come to your church on a Sabbath morning? Because you're dead. You're not doing anything. So constantly put stories up there that tell what you're doing. Okay, let's get to the nitty-gritty and, and find out what news is. I, I, I'm hungry as well. I've got my eye on the lunch too, so, so don't worry. <laughs> news is something that people don't know. So if we go back to this court case this morning... People don't know about it until the Telegraph publishes it, but then they don't know what the Adventist response and reaction to is, is unless we as a church say something. That's also true in your local setting. Your church may be doing fantastic things, but if you don't tell the story, nobody knows about it. It's very interesting, following my Adventist news feed, there are some places like Bolingbroke Hospital in America, I don't even know where in America it is, but they have their act together, and I get a news story from them sometimes twice a day, because they're doing stuff. And I'm thinking, is that the only place that does stuff in America? It can't be, because there's loads of places. But if we don't report it, and if we bring that back to our own local situation, we, we have churches, June Coombs, if she's watching this live stream, will now get in as embarrassed as me. She, she is the, one of the PR team at Stanborough Park Church. And she must get at least 30 stories a year in the Watford Observer. Because anything that happens in Stanborough Park, she writes it up. If the school crossing patrol lady is retiring from the local school, she's been an Adventist, she writes it up, it gets in the paper. If a choir sings, she writes it up, it gets in the paper. When Sam Neves takes over as the associate pastor there, she writes it up, it's in the paper. And again and again and again, there's stories there all the time, but it's things that people don't know. You tell the story, it happens. Okay? The other thing is it needs to be interesting. And that's sometimes where I talk to June and say, you know, I can't put your story in BUC News this week because, okay, you've, you've had a baptism, but every church in the British Union has a baptism, we hope. Uh, I can't write your story, I can't publish your story unless there's something that's unique and interesting and different about it that makes me want to put it in there. It's interesting, it needs to affect people. If that baptism is of, I'll just pick on Kirsten because she's sitting there, you know, Kirsten the ex-drug addict that came to the feeding program, you didn't know Kirsten, here's the truth, <laughs> that, that came to the, the in, in fact was, was found on the street on the Friday night soup run that Stanborough Park Church does and they made friends with her and they found her a place to stay and then she's come in and gradually she's changed her way, she's given up on the heroin, she's now in church. You know, I'll publish that. For those of you on the live stream, that was just a joke, all right? Uh, but you get the point, okay? Now there's some really crucial things that are important to me as a news editor. One is that news has a sell-by date. You would be amazed how many stories I'm given by local church communication secretaries. It's the 1st of March tomorrow, and the last messenger that was published last Friday had a story about Christmas at Fleetwood School. 
Do you care about Christmas on the 22nd of February? You know, you cared about it on the 24th of December. Actually, by the 26th, you're probably sick of it. So something about Christmas that is published the week after Christmas is news. If it's published in February, it's not news. If something's happened in your church and you want it in your local paper, and if you want it in BUC News, if you want it in Messenger, the recommendation is if it happened on Sabbath, have it on my desk by Monday morning. At the very, very latest, have it on my desk by 6 o'clock Wednesday, because that is my deadline. And I then spend Wednesday evening and Thursday morning editing and writing the news so that you can get it Thursday night. I got two stories yesterday evening that people expected to be in the news yesterday evening, except the news had already gone out because I needed to be here. Um, if it comes late, it won't happen. If it happened late, it won't get reported. It's no longer news. Okay? News is also something that affects many people. So if it's a, just a minor thing that you had an extra three people come to your Sabbath school class, it's not news. I don't want to hear about it. But if it's bigger... If it's a nice church event where something's really happening, make sure it is reported. And of course, for churches, you know, poor, poor Gavin, he's got to report this weekend. He's scribbling. Yeah, because how do you take all these wonderful presentations you're hearing and in 800 words turn that into a report of the weekend? It's, it's a really impossible task, but I'm looking forward to reading it. Adventists do big events and then we want it reported. So I, I think I put an example up. Last week we had our minister's council across the British Union, and I reported that. Gavin had an easy time. I, I sat there and I took the notes and then I pulled something out of it. But I looked for the thing about that event that was different, that was engaging, that would tell the story. You can go online and see that because you can't see it up on the screen. But you're looking for the thing that's going to make it exciting. Okay? Um, Oh, you can actually. No, you can't quite see the headline. We'll just move on. All right. Here are some other crucial things about your news. It should be interesting. Okay. Think about it. Daryl was talking about television just now. And back when I was young, in Britain, we had three channels. And you physically had to stand up out of your chair, walk across the room, and twiddle a knob to change one channel to the other. And it was way too much effort. Whereas now you sit there with your remote control and you roughly have about three seconds that you look at a channel and you're on to the next one. And the producer may have spent one and a quarter million pounds producing that film or that documentary. You've got three seconds and you decide, I want to watch that or I don't. Exactly the same is true with the news you're writing. And if you write it in a boring style or it's boring information, a, the editor is going to put it straight into the, the rubbish bin, and B, your readers aren't going to read it anyway. Okay? So news needs to be interesting. It needs to tell you something, something that, you know, the, the whole of Europe is now going to be transformed by the conference this weekend because Carsten has taught us how to teach. And we're all coming to see the scary Viking. You know, scary Viking is a good kind of word to use because it brings people to life. We're all scared of the Vikings. Or it's a, call, it's a call to action. Because of this thing that I've been to, I am now going to do this. Or it means I'm going to do something differently now. I've realized that the last 30 years of my ministry has been really boring, but I've now got a second life, and I'm going to do it this way. Or the advertising, I realized instead of putting out one handbill every three months to my neighbor, I've got to give them all sorts of advertising, and so I'm going to do it differently. Or it gives me hope. And for Adventists, maybe that's some of the most in, important things. And I, I was listening to that advertising presentation really carefully and realizing that Adventists give a lot of hope to people. And some of the stories that we print, that we tell, that we put on our television in programs like In Conversation, we're trying to give people hope. Okay? We've already talked about who is your audience in earlier presentations, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. But if you're writing a news report, whether it's for your local website or your local newspaper, 
or nationally. Don't worry about nationally secular papers because you'll have a challenge to get on them unless you've just murdered your wife or something and then they'll come to you. Um, but nationally Adventist, think about who your audience is because you're going to treat them in a different way. An Adventist you're going to treat differently than a non-Adventist. If it's an Adventist, you can get away with some jargon. If it's a non-Adventist, they don't know who the South England Conference is, and frankly, they don't care. And uh, they don't know what's um, buried in the blood of the lamb is, except that you obviously do animal sacrifice. And, and so you've got to write it for an audience that understands it. Are they ex-Adventist? They are a crucial audience for me, for the website, and for BUC News. Because while the principal people that read BUC News, most of them are Adventist. I am astonished by the number that actually are fringe Adventist or ex-Adventist, but actually want to know what's going on in the church. And if we're putting stories there that engage with them, that's the kind of thing that may draw them back. That's the kind of thing that may say, well, the church that I left 20 years ago is a different church today, maybe I should take the risk and come back in. They, they are actually my most important audience. They are the audience that I always have in mind when I'm writing and editing. And they are there. If it's local, then you put the Adventist Church on St. Mark's Road. If it's national, you just say New Bowl Church because the actual street doesn't matter. And in terms of naming people, that, that would be the same as well. We've talked about national. You only get in the national newspaper very rarely. I've done it two or three times, and thankfully it's been good news stories, um, but it's not always. Internationally, if, I, I can promise you this. If you write your story right, correctly, it will get picked up internationally. I, I went to Newbold School a few weeks ago. I only went there for fun because they were having a mad hair day, which sounded attractive, and I'd got some free time. I thought, I'll go and take some photos of these kids, which I did. And they were there with their blue spiky hair and all sorts of different things. And I went in, and I probably took about 90 or 100 photos and published about 20 of them. And then I interviewed the little kid who had organized the day, a little 10-year-old boy, suffering from type 1 diabetes, had been diagnosed in the summer. Very engaging story. I pointed a video camera at him and expected him to say two sentences, and he was so eloquent. I did an interview with him and with his mother. That story went international because it was engaging. It had a good photograph that people liked to see. It had the video that people engaged with. And, uh, you know, kids sell newspapers. So we put it in BUC News... And ANN, the, the GC news service, picked it up and went with it as well. And some other news services picked up and went with it as well. And then it, it, got, it almost went viral on Facebook. There were people watching it, watching the video. Uh, and that's, that's the market, your international market. Don't worry about it, because if you write the story correctly, locally, the international part will take care of itself. And anyway, most of you are local involved in a local church, that's your primary audience. Your local church is actually the most important place, the community around your church, get the story to them. Okay, so here's the journalism part now. This is what journalists like, isn't it? Journalists always like the truth. Yep. It's what Mark Twain said. Mark Twain, in the days when it was only newspapers, he says, if you don't read a newspaper, you are uninformed. If you do read a newspaper, you are misinformed. <laughs> of course, if you read the Messenger or Adventist Review, you only ever hear the truth. Um, but if, if you want your story published, and I'm going to talk principally for the, for the non-Adventist secular press for a moment, but it applies equally for me, for BUC News, or for Messenger, or for whatever publication your church has in, in your union, um, they like things that are topical. You know, I, I published something yesterday in BUC News about the floods in the Somerset levels. To be honest, I almost didn't publish it because the floods aren't in the news anymore. You know, the floods are still there, but the news agenda has moved on. 
I decided to publish it because I thought there's something important, topical for Adventists. Because, you know, we send tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of pounds to Sudan and uh, different places around the world that have humanitarian crises. And then was a humanitarian crisis with our next door neighbor. We sit there. Um, and so I thought it was important to publish the story that I did yesterday. So you want something that's topical, something that's in the public mind, something that's in the news, but then you need to make it relevant. And you've got to think carefully sometimes how to make that relevant. Sometimes the programs you're doing in the church are good programs in themselves, but how do you make it relevant to the community around you? You may be doing a cooking program in your church because you know, Adventists are very good at health and exercise and cooking and all of those things, aren't we? But um, how do we sell that to our, to our neighbor? You know, I, I don't really care about vegetarian cookery. I just you know, go and buy my fish fingers and chips and I'm fine. Can you do something that makes it relevant because you're doing a credit crunch cookery class? You know, you struggling with your finances? You want to know how to feed a family of five for four pounds? Come along to our class. Not only will you learn how to budget and feed your family better, but the family will be healthier as a result. You're making it relevant. And that, will make, that was more advertising than news, but it's the same principle. When it happens and you report it, it will happen as well. Okay, journalists like the unusual. You, you knew that. I think in the, in the seven years I've been doing this job as communication director, the biggest, highest, best publicity we ever had was when the South England Youth Department organized a anti-gun and knife crime march from Trafalgar Square, was it? Leicester Square, down into Kennington. And so you had 5,000 plus mainly Afro-Caribbean young people marching down. There were some white young people there as well because my kids were there, so that made three. Um, no, there were some from Newbold there as well. They're, they're, no, that's totally biased. Um, the, the reason I specifically said Afro-Caribbean is because in the mentality of the media, Afro-Caribbean youth equals gangs, equals underachievement, equals knife and guns. It's not true, but it's the perception that's in the mind, and, and, and the media likes to play with those perceptions. That's why I don't like the Daily Mail, and I don't mind that being streamed and recorded, because if you want a distortion of the news, that's the newspaper you will always hear it in. I'll wait for them to sue me, because... <laughs> They never responded to the last two complaints I've put them to them about distorted Adventist stories. So uh, we're, we're now equal. Um, <laughs> but when it went, when that march went through London and stopped the traffic outside Parliament and went down to the park and then there was a concert in the park and all sorts of things, that was reported by Sky News, by London BBC, it was reported in 100 newspapers that I saw come into my news feed as far as the Belfast Telegraph. Adventists doing something unusual. Now, okay, that's national, and that's great. And when they did the same thing again next, the next year, they didn't get such a response because suddenly it wasn't unusual anymore. The first time it's unusual, the second time, oh, we've seen that. What are you doing that's different? But then think about your local church. Because Adventist churches are packed full of unusual people that do unusual things. Now, I'm actually saying that positively. You know, your young people, instead of going off backpacking around the world for a year, and getting drunk in Thailand and losing their passport and everything, they go off on voluntary service and teach English in the Marshall Islands. Isn't that unusual? Wouldn't your local paper be interested in that story, both before they go out and maybe during their time out there and when they come back? They're interested in the unusual. They're also interested in, in trouble. 
trouble sells newspapers, doesn't it? Um, in fact, some people say that the uh, you know, news at 10 on the BBC is a summary of what the devil's been up to for the last 24 hours. Uh, it's, it's that kind of thing. But even trouble, I believe as Adventists, we should report it. And I, I, I do nag some of our uh, institutions when there is trouble and they don't report it because you lose your credibility. If you're not telling the story. And trouble can actually be good news. You know, if, even in this, this court case and this judgment that will come out this morning, even in the briefing that we put out several weeks ago about it, it can be good news because you bridge from the bad news to the good. Okay, it's a tragedy and we express our sincere sympathies to the family and all of those involved with this child that died. But as Seventh-day Adventists, we believe in positive health. And in our churches, we run health programs. And these are the kinds of things that we do. And in the specific case of, of this couple, who sadly left the Advent, they're, they're still on our membership books, but they stopped attending the Adventist church in about 2009. They went off with an extreme kind of faction of Adventism. Um, so, you know, one, one of the problems why her baby got rickets is that she was an extreme vegan and didn't take medical advice, wouldn't listen to medical advice when it was given to her, moved away from the church family that would have been a support and saying, look, you know, you seriously need to do something here. And so the other part of our story is, as a church family, we are supportive and we encourage each other. Okay, now that's, that's both topical, relevant, unusual, and trouble all in one go, that story. Thankfully, you don't get too many of those. But you can do it. High Wycom Church, High Wycom Micklefield, had a fire a few years back. Some, some kids pulled a wheelie bin up to the back of the church, set it on fire. The fire went through the window and destroyed the children's room at the back. The church was closed for over a year. Um, thankfully, the pastor of the church at that time had remembered some media training he had had at some ministers' meetings, and so he phoned me and he said, Pastor, what do we do? And he got to me before the journalist did. And so the story that went in the newspaper could have been something to do with horrible, delinquent kids burned down yet another church. The story that actually went in the newspaper was Seventh-day Adventist members stood in the car park Sunday morning and prayed for the youth in their community. They have made a pledge that when their church reopens, they will institute mentoring programs to help work with those children. You get the point I'm making? You put a little bit of thought to it, and even bad news can actually become very good news. You know, when, when our office burnt down, the, the British Union office burnt down in 2008, I don't recommend you do it too often. It's, <laughs> it's, it's quite stressful. But when it burnt down, because we've got good connections with the Watford Observer, or even because a Watford Observer journalist happened to drive down the road at the time of the fire, within an hour and a half of that fire starting, there was a photo of our office in flames in the Watford Observer. And that story, that did go viral all over the world. But what was really interesting was that a ex-News of the World journalist who's an atheist who doesn't like Christians put a comment in the comment section at the end of the story that said, well, these Adventists are just a billion dollar American religion and they can rebuild their office without blinking and anyway it doesn't matter because God doesn't exist. And uh, you know I looked at that comment and I thought what do you do with it? And I thought I'm just going to do nothing for a few hours and see what happens. And the good thing is that because the Watford community know the Adventist church, because June Coombs writes her continual articles for the Watford Observer, people started commenting on the comments. And they were saying, my next door neighbor is a Seventh-day Adventist, and they are a neighbor in the best sense of the word. I used to be a careers advisor, and I would go to Stanborough School, and the kids at that school were so different 
to the children in the other schools I used to visit. And then they started attacking this News of the World journalist and pulling him to pieces. Much better for them to do it than for an Adventist to do it. And at the end of 10 hours, I just went there and said, I would like to thank the Watford community for the support that they're giving us during this difficult time. So even the trouble. Actually, Watford Observer loved us because they usually get, even for a major football do you have major football matches with Watford? Yeah, maybe. But they told us, <laughs> they told us that um, you know, even after a major match, that they would maybe get 12 or 15 comments on their website, and you know, maybe a few hundred people would look at it. For this story, they had over 3,000 people looking at it, and it put their advertising rates up. So they were really grateful. Um, <laughs> they like the human interest. And we've already talked about that in, in, in a sense, but we are good with stories and let the newspapers know our stories. They will, you know, the, the little boy with the spiky blue hair, you know, a journalist will come out for that or, or send them the story. They will love it. And I'm, I'm, I'm saying this really not to raise you or us as a great church, look at this wonderful place we're at, but in just getting your name in the paper the Newbold Seventh-day Adventist Church or the Manchester South Seventh-day Adventist Church or whichever church you come from, it gives some name recognition. And so it adds to the advertising that we talked about two sessions back, if you still remember that. And as it raises that name, it's also raising the name of the God that we love and serve, and, and that's what we want to do. And so the last, the little S on truths, this is an important one, please help me with this. Keep it short. If you send me a story that is 1,200 words, you have created a lot of work for me to do. If you send me one that's 350 words, I will call you blessed. <laughs> you know, tell me what you need to tell me and then stop. Okay? Because the reality is anyway, and you know it as a punter, either your online news that you're reading or the newspaper or the messenger when you pick it up, you scan the headlines and then you start reading the story. There's very few of them you actually get to the end of the story, is it? So uh, that's, keep it short, keep it simple, and we'll love it. That's the end of part one. You've got this really difficult choice now because this afternoon I then actually tell you how to write your news story. If you're going to the three other workshops that are all very good and I would love to go to myself, so if you go to those and nobody comes to mind, I can go to one of them. Um, you see that QR code up in the corner there. If you scan that in, that will take you to an online version of what I've just said and how to write a news story. Um, if you can't catch that code, just go to our website, adventist.org.uk, and in Can We Help, just write communication training, and it will take you to that site, and, and you can get the information there. But thank you for listening, and enjoy your lunch. <laughs>